What's up guys? Welcome back to Rugged Adventures. Been a minute since we've been out here doing some stuff, but uh, here we are today. And what I have here is the legendary Razor 800. They made this in a two-seater and a four-seater. And among Razor enthusiasts, and especially people that own 800s, it's considered a tank. It's almost indestructible is what people say. Now, people with the more powerful machines uh, will often say that's because it doesn't have enough power to break anything. But uh, that's really neither here nor there. Because I made a video last year, maybe, about the top five reasons to purchase a Razor 800 in 2020. And that video has done very well for me. I think it's nearing uh, 20,000 views, a ton of subscribers. And what I always got with that was people saying, well, you didn't point out any of the weaknesses. And that's true. Uh, so today, what I want to do is go over the three biggest issues that Razor 800s of almost any year face and the way that you can either get around those issues to fix them or just learn how to deal with them. So we are going to get into that today. All right, guys, number one on the list is the air filter. Now, this has plagued the Razor 800 from the very moment that it came out because usually when people get these things, they start accessorizing them just like i have i've put lights on it I've, you know there's doors on it skid plates i've messed around with the springs people put crap on their razors to make them better all the time people want more horsepower it doesn't matter if they if it came out with 50 or 500 people would try to get a little bit more horsepower so what they would do is they would come in here and they take out the factory paper air filter because those are typically thought of as being restrictive and they would put in an aftermarket like a k n or something that's not the factory paper air filter and what they would end up doing is they were sucking in a ton of dust because k and air filters are not great air filters. They will let a lot of air through, but they don't filter it very well. And what that does is it sends dusty, nasty air from up in here into the intake and it ruins the um, top end of your 800 engine and then you end up having to do you know a top end kit um, valve seals rings uh, cylinder walls things of that nature uh, from dust coming in through aftermarket air filters and a lot of folks think that it that it sucks in the air from here and that would this would be a terrible place to suck air in because you know there's all sorts of crap flinging around in here actually it's ducted and it sucks in the air under here right there is where air comes into the air filter to uh, you know go into the engine and what have you so as long as you run a oem paper air filter you're going to be good and people say to put like a little bit of grease on the inside of that uh, air filter element where it contacts the housing and that will enable you to trap any dust that does get by because as we're going to go over a little bit later in this video putting in a, uh, an aftermarket air filter is not going to get you any more power there's just not a lot of power to get out of this engine without significant mods so just leave your oem air filter in there change it relatively often especially if you're in really dusty conditions and the top end of your engine will thank you now since we were talking about the power of the 800 and how adding an aftermarket air filter isn't really going to give you a whole bunch more power actually it's probably not going to give you any more power whatsoever It'll just maybe lighten your wallet and that's how you can get a little faster when you have to do a top end for the engine but this guy here this 800 this is an older style engine this is not one of the new ProStar engines, it was derived, I think, from the old 700 Polaris, but this is a two-cylinder, two-valve, overhead valve, so the block, or the cam is in the block engine, and so it has a lot of torque, and that's what a lot of people like about these, especially rock crawlers, mudders, they have, it has a ton of torque at relatively low RPMs, but it is not one of the new four-valve, overhead cam, uh, high RPM, Pro Star motors and they're the and those have a lot of advantages over these but the thing is is that this came originally with like 52 horsepower in the um pre high output and I, it's like high output i need to get a new sticker here that says like medium-ish output but it was like 52 
horsepower before that and then they made some updates to uh, the engine i'm sure the programming and that got a lot more fuel economy i heard it was like 30 percent better fuel economy and the horsepower went up to like 55 so practically not noticeable now oftentimes people will, be, will ask what can i do to get more power out of my razor 800 and they want to know what kind of exhaust what kind of tuners what kind of air filters etc etc to get more power out of their 800 because they're used to getting that out of either like their diesel trucks or other atvs that just have more power potential and the simple thing is is that there is no bolt-on items that are going to help you increase the power of this 800 engine it's just not going to happen i haven't dynoed it myself but there are several uh, uh, things online that you can search for as far as um razor 800 dyno runs after bolt-ons and really nothing made any difference whatsoever the only thing that is going to help out the power output of the razor 800 engine is either a turbo kit or a big bore kit but when you think about it putting those things on is going to cost a ton of money uh, other than the big bore kit if you're already doing the a top end or something might as well just go ahead and do a big bore kit but i hear it really hurts the reliability of the machine the turbo kit and such by the time you spend the money on it you could probably sell this thing and get a newer model like a 900 or a 1000 or a turbo and be far ahead of the game as far as the type of machine that you have other than uh, obviously this has the geared transmission and the 900 and the turbo do not have the geared transmission they got the silly reverse chain but I would recommend versus putting a ton of money into the 800 engine just getting a newer rig that has more horsepower anyway okay guys the third thing that's uh kind of a con a negative to the razor 800 and probably its biggest achilles heel is right in here this rear differential specifically the pinion nut now these are have been known to back off and fail and take out the entire rear differential just at any time it has been known to happen at several hundred miles several thousand miles um, over 10,000 miles and all of a sudden it will just fail and it will grenade the differential the deal is is in the first few months of them making the razor 800 rear differentials they used um, metal hardware and it all stayed together and torqued down to the right amount some point in the 08 model year they switched over to using a nylock nut which is just similar to you like a, any nylon nut um, that you get from the store to put on a bolt that you don't want to back off but in this case for whatever reason those nuts started to back off of the pinion and over time it just comes off and again the, you know the pinion gear is able to come loose in the differential and grenades the entire differential there's usually absolutely no warning when that happens it's just boom and you're in for about a one thousand dollar repair to repair your differential now uh, in online forums it seems like about 20 to 30 percent of the people have actually had this happen to them maybe not even that high and then uh polaris dealers essentially act like it it's an unknown issue and you know it, it's all over the place as far as if it happens to you or not but there is a solution and you can get um, metal hardware for this and tighten up the pinion nut onto this to the correct torque value and i'll try to link uh, videos to um, all the things we've talked about today especially this one but it does involve taking apart a large portion of the backside of this machine so it is a fairly labor intensive job some people may want to roll the dice uh, i think that i will probably just roll the dice on that and see what happens um, i'll probably end up getting burned on it but we'll see how it goes but that is probably the 800's biggest achilles heel is this uh rear differential pinion nut so there you have it internet land that is the three biggest issues that i think that i can think of concerning the razor 800 and most of those have a, a fix that you can do to them the power side of things you just you're kind of just stuck unless you want to spend the amount of money necessary to really get into a newer more powerful rig anyway so it's kind of you're just stuck unless you want to just throw money at a project car 
and that's you know your prerogative if you guys like this video be sure to smash that like button for me be sure to share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed yet be sure to hit that subscribe button down below the more people we have subscribed the more uh, the closer we get to monetization and then once we get some of that YouTube money coming in we can do some uh, cool things to this we can put on some bigger tires maybe some portals uh, maybe upgrade to a bigger car and be able to uh, do crazy stuff I do love my Razor 800 but I'm not opposed to one of the new uh, Razor Pro 4s with their 180 some horsepower and even though they sort of look like Pontiac Aztecs I'm willing to make the trade-off for that uh, for the more power and the more back seat room I appreciate you guys watching today and I'll see you in the next one